Hi, my name is Tony Santo and I'm a large format photographer. This video is all about synchronizing your large format camera with some modern day studio strobes. In order to hook up your large format camera so that the flash synchronizes with the shutter speed, you need to have a large format lens with a shutter that has a PC sync port on it. This enables you to connect the shutter portion to the studio strobe to make that interface happen. And there's two ways to do that. One is to take the traditional PC sync cord or cable. One end has the stereo headphone jack on it that you would plug into the studio strobe and the other end has a PC sync port analog that you connect to the shutter. Now I've already got the one end, the stereo headphone jack connected to the studio strobes here to show you how this works. Um, but you can see that the downside of this is you've got all this tangly mess here. But I'll connect the PC sync port analog to the shutter. I'll cock the shutter and let's see if the studio strobes fire. They don't fire. That is something to be aware of with cables like this is that uh, for some reason they tend to not fire sometimes. Uh, so let's try that again and make sure that uh, we get these to fire. So there you go, that time it worked. So that's one way to do it. The method that I prefer to use is to use a, a transmitter and receiver combination so that you don't have any wires between the camera and the studio strobes. These happen to be pocket wizards, but you can really use any brand that you want, any kind of transmitter or receiver that's out there. Uh, to show you how this works, one end's already connected to the, the studio strobe, uh, but the other end, I'm going to show you how you connect it to the lens. You basically, there's two ports on the pocket wizard. I'm going to select the camera one, so the stereo headphone jack goes into one, and then uh, the other end goes into the PC sync uh, port. And you can see that when I cock the shutter and I fire, the uh, studio strobes go off without a hitch. And I think I've only, uh, I can only remember one instance where the actual uh, shutter didn't fire the strobes, uh, but these are pretty consistent and they're very, very reliable. So that's my preferred method of um, connecting the shutter or your large format camera to studio strobe lighting. One of the benefits of large format lenses is that they have these leaf shutters. Leaf shutters can synchronize at any shutter speed. So if your max shutter speed, for example, on this lens, it's a 150 millimeter lens, um, it's a Copal Zero shutter, its max shutter speed is 1 500th of a second. You can synchronize uh, the firing your flash with that shutter speed, which is really nice because the brief flash that you're going to get is in combination with the fast shutter speed is going to basically freeze any kind of motion uh, that might occur in that image. So for example, I do quite a bit of portraiture of my kids and I don't want to have any motion blur in case they move a little bit. So I want to freeze that action. I always try to synchronize at the max shutter speed. Uh, in 8x10, I use the 300 millimeter lens a lot and that's in a Copal 3 shutter which uh, only has a max shutter speed of 1 1 25th. So that's what I particularly use um, when I shoot 8x10. So my philosophy is just basically if I want a tack sharp image and I'm doing portraiture, I'm always going to shoot at the, uh, the max shutter speed that my leaf shutter enables, enables me to do so, just to make sure there, um, if there's any movement that it's tack sharp and I'm not going to get that motion blur. On older shutters, it's important to note that you may have two flash settings, an M setting which stands for magnesium bulbs and an X setting for modern day studio flash photography. Unless you are using magnesium bulbs, be sure to set your shutter to the X setting. So some of my viewers may be wondering, what's the deal with the number six here? I try to do a large format portrait of my daughters every time they have a birthday and include the number that corresponds to that birthday. So this particular year, my daughter turned six and this is what we used in her photo shoot. So the idea came from my wife who uh, suggested that maybe you could build it out of Legos this year because my daughters both love Legos. And I thought, well, I don't really know how to build the number six out of Legos, and I don't think there are any instructions out there. Um, so let's go out and buy a couple of boxes and see what we can come up with. And this is what uh, we came up with. It measures 40 and a half inches tall and 22 inches wide, and uh, it's a couple of inches deep. 
uh, in certain locations. This area is a little bit thinner. Uh, the base doesn't have very much behind it. Uh, but it uh, was a lot of fun to build with my daughters and it was tedious and if you're wondering had, did this break, did it fall over, yes it did break like five or six times even this morning when I did the large format shoot um, the base of it came crashing down when I tried to uh, pick it up and, and move it um, and each time it was a puzzle to try to figure out just how to put this back together. Uh, it wasn't easy, it was a challenge, but it was a lot of fun and it's all for the sake of, you know, my daughters and, and giving them something large format wise as far as a portrait is concerned and to have something to kind of look back and have some good memories of. So in the end, they'll get to wreck this thing, they'll crash it, and they'll break it all apart and they'll have lots of blocks to play with. So that's the deal with the number six, just in case you were wondering. Do you have anything interesting or intricate that you've built out of Legos and you want to share with all of us? Please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. As always, thanks for watching. Yeah.